Hello everyone. So today I have Antonio Sanjo with me. Antonio, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brigitte, for having me. Thank you. It, it is a pleasure. Well, my name is Antonio Sanjo. I practice and teach introspective hypnosis, among other techniques that I that I practice, but I only teach introspective hypnosis. Um, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm originally from Peru, South America, but I live in the US. Um, other techniques I practice is quantum healing hypnosis technique, uh, Life Between Lives uh, by Michael Newton, and Past Life Therapy by Jose Luis Cabuldi. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Antonio has one book out already, which is in the background. Would you oh, like to talk you. about this a little bit? Sure. Um, so the title of my book is My Soul's Purpose. And, and, and I talk in the book, I talk about my journey and how it changed my life, how I ran into hypnosis, how I found my, my purpose as practicing hypnosis, uh, helping not only my clients, which are incarnated souls, but also disincarnated ones, right? Uh, what we call the spirit attachment, lost souls. That is how I found my mission. I'm sharing a little bit of my journey, but at the same time, uh, I'm sharing cases, I'm sharing concepts of spirituality, and my idea is to motivate those that um, want to start this path of being a, what we call ourselves light workers. We're here to be at the service of others. And my book was written to, I mean, for that purpose, to encourage people to follow this path. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, since I started talking about introspective hypnosis on my channel, I started getting quite a lot of messages asking about you because I'd mentioned you from time to time. Oh, so. You. I'm going to ask you, you know, questions a little bit more about introspective hypnosis a bit later mm -hmm. on. I'll also be sharing my experience that I had with you. Mm -hmm. I have booked okay. a session with Antonio myself. But before that, I would like to kind of backtrack and ask you a little bit about how your life looked like, what kind of career you had <laughs> and how you transitioned into introspective Ooh, or uh, hypnosis because you didn't start okay. with introspective yeah that is a long story i well i first studied um i entered university to study business, business administration because that's what my father was telling me you know he said you need to be a business administrator you need to take care of our business our company so that's what i did but when i was up i mean in in Peru is five years. After two and a half years, I noticed that this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted to do in life. I didn't see myself sitting behind a desk, you know. So um, I, I, I left that and then I didn't know what I liked. When people told me um, I, like my, I like my job and, and I like what I do, to me it didn't make sense because I had not found anything that I really liked back then. Then I started with computers and networks. So I started to be a systems engineer, computers and networks. And that's what I did uh, for some time until um, December 31st, 2018, when I decided to switch to hypnosis full time. I, was, um, I learned hypnosis in 2013, starting with Dolores Cannon, and I was practicing after hours. So I was working my, my full time job, 8.30 to 5.00. Or, or 5.30 sometimes. And then after hours, I will be facilitating sessions or on the weekends and during my vacation time. So that's what I was doing until the moment that in 2008, um, I, I was already teaching classes, but it was the first live class and big class. And we did it with Alba Weinman, my friend and colleague. And I was transformed during that week. And, and not only with what I experienced teaching to a, a big crowd, we were over 40 people in the class, but uh, we received the gift of healing. Uh, two of the uh, demo sessions, people obtained healing right in front of everybody. And I, 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 I taught that class during one of my vacation weeks. And when, I, when it was time to go back to work on Monday, I turned on my computer. I had this overwhelming feeling like I was telling me, what are you doing and I was not paying attention to it there was a voice telling me what are you doing you're here to do things um, to have more meaning not just we working in front of a computer because that's what I was doing I didn't listen to it and it, it's, I 
actually it took me two or three days to start paying attention to that because I was getting sick, I was getting headaches, back pain. And it got to a point where I said, I surrender. That's it, I, I cannot keep doing this anymore. I cannot keep fighting this anymore. I'll accept, I'll do whatever I have to do. If I make a mistake, if it is a mistake, then I can look for another job. I had been working for this company uh, for 12 years, right? I look for another job, but um, I prefer to make this change now than wait until I'm, I'm 65 or retire and said, oh, I should have made that change back then. So I trusted the universe and my life and the life of my family changed completely. We started with the classes. Alba was assisting me in some of these classes. We were both teaching these uh, classes from time to time. Um, I kept doing the online classes, online sessions. We started traveling to different countries until COVID hit. But yeah, that's that's what I was doing. I mean, if you want to know how I got into hypnosis, it was a different story. What is that story like? <laughs> okay, so I was always exposed to metaphysical topics through my father. And I explained that in my book. Uh, my father was reading different books. One of the ones that I remember the most was Many Lives, Many Masters by, by Brian Weiss. And he was talking to me about reincarnation. He was talking to me about what the book was saying, right? And even though I was not paying that much, much attention, in my mind, I had no doubt of that concept. It made complete sense to me. But my father, my mother is very religious. She's Catholic and I, I was raised in a Catholic school. So um, even though my religion was telling me that doesn't exist deep inside of me, it said, oh, this makes sense, it makes sense. But I didn't pay attention to that. Then when my mother-in-law passed away, um, my wife came back because she, we went to Peru, she came back and she brought some of her books. I'm talking about years and years ago, right? Uh, I mean, we're talking about the, the time when my father read that book and the time that I got the book that used to belong to my mother-in-law had been passed many years. It, and it was the same book, Many Lives, Many Masters. My wife said, oh, I brought this book. Maybe you find it helpful. And I started reading that book and I read it in one day. And after I, I was done with that book, I said, this is what I want to do. So I started searching online. That's how I ran first into Aurelio Mejia. I watched a lot of his videos, um, but he was not training back then. He was not teaching classes. I was not able to travel to Colombia back then because I was working my full-time job. So I started with Dolores Cannon. A friend of mine talked to, told me about Dolores Cannon. So I trained with Dolores Cannon, level one, level two. I met Alba in Alba Wyman in the level two class. But then I was able to, destiny, I guess, I was able to host Aurelio Mejia here in Charlotte in my house for six days. And that's how I learned um, what he, well, he was not calling it introspective hypnosis. Um, but that's what I learned. I learned the method, method from him. And then I've been making adjustments as I learned more things, I implemented more things, I changed the style a little bit, but it's basically the same concept. That's how I ran into hypnosis and past lives and, and, and dealing with lost souls and all that. Yeah, and it's interesting that you said that because I was about to ask you a question. Was there some sort of tie or something that happened in your younger days? Because at least... What I'm observing from people around me, I see that there is a connection to what people's mission is somewhere in the childhood. They came across something, they used to like doing something, they lost yeah. it, they came back to it. Well, um, when, I was, uh, when I was like 23, 24, uh, I actually got divorced from, from my wife back then, who is my wife now, because we got divorced and then we remarried some time later, right? A few years later. So uh, during that time, I went to visit a, a friend of my parents and my um, uncles and aunts. And this guy used to, his, his name is um, Miguel, you call him Lito. So he used to read, and I don't know if he still does it, he should be in his 70s now, late 70s. Mm, he used to do the Egyptian terror. And I was, I went looking for guidance. I didn't know what to do. I felt lost. I just like had no, no, I had, I had lost my path. I didn't know what I was going to do in life. I was confused. I was 24. So he was telling me, um, you have this card. 
And this card is, means your personality. And he said in one of the cards, this card means the son of God. And that, that's, that's not news. We all, we're all the son of God. So, uh, oh, well, the children are children of God. And he said, no, 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 you don't understand. This card means that, that you have something to do in this life, something important to do in this life. I was not paying attention to that. I didn't believe in, in, in missions. And I was worried about something else. But when time passed by, I, I understood what he meant because I was receiving the same message through other people. And even uh, during some time where, where the company that I used to work for was laying off people, right? Um, one psychic told me, they're not going to let you go. You are leaving because you're, gonna, you're going to resign because you're going to be doing doing this, you're going to be teaching. You came to be a teacher, and this is your purpose. What are you talking about? And I see you're going to be traveling, and so forget it. I'm focused on not losing my job. What, how can this person be telling me about teaching classes and traveling? You know? <laughs> so in, in the end, that's in less than a year, what this last psychic said became true, all of it. You know, and it's not that I was looking for it. it. It just took place. I couldn't help it. It was part of my destiny, I guess. Yeah. But that's how I was receiving messages. And even when I started practicing hypnosis, um, whenever my clients uh, had a connection with a deceased loved one, for example, they would give a message to me. Sometimes spirit guides would show up. And some of them would give me a beautiful message. Some of them would just pull my ear saying, mm-mm you're not doing it right. This is not the way to do it. You need to do it more for love. And what do you mean? What do you mean do this with love? Until sometime later I understood. And when I, once I understood that what we do during the session is with love. And even when teaching classes, it changed my sessions completely and the energy and the results, obviously. It's, it's in my book and I actually talk about it there because when this, this spirit told me, as through my client, right? You need to do this more with love. What are you talking about? Are you talking about a discount? Are you talking about doing this for free? What, what do you mean love? I'm do, facilitating a session for a client. So when I started, I, even, even though I, I knew I wanted to help people, I always wanted to help people in different ways. I didn't understand what this soul was telling me about loving my clients. And then another spirit guy was telling me, you're forcing this. When I, when I wanted to put my first class together, and, the, and this, is in, this is on YouTube, actually. It's in Spanish, though. When this guide is telling me, um, you're forcing this. You, you're forcing this. It's not your job. What, what, what the guide meant is, this is not that you can create a business plan and you're going to put people together. And, and the spirit guide said, not everybody has the gift. Like, don't force it, right? And then I stopped it. I said, okay, I'm not going to force this class. I'm going to not we'll talk about the class, but then a few months later, that class, the first class came together by itself and it was, it was beautiful. So yeah, it was always the message about doing it with love and doing it from your heart and, and just embrace your gift, you know? Yeah. And what do you love about this concept of introspective hypnosis yourself? Like, take us through it a little bit, because I know some people watching this, they'll be like, okay. Ooh, how does it look like? Okay, so, so let's help them understand you know, what introspective hypnosis is about, right? So introspective hypnosis focuses on helping people in, in what is happening to them now. And most of the time, what happens to people now are emotions and fears and traumas and and unresolved businesses and what I also call some entrapment. But for whatever reason, they manifest as symptoms. And the symptoms could be a fear of speaking in public or phobia or, or fe feeling trapped or, or maybe you were mistreated or maybe you were abused or maybe when you were a little girl or a little boy, you were molested or you were raped. So all of those things that happen to us in, the la in our lives when we don't deal with it, they manifest as physical symptoms. Now we're talking about symptoms that do not have a medical explanation because we, yes, we do need not doc we do need not um, need doctors for many of the things that, that we have. But I'm talking about these symptoms that do not make sense, right? That do have do not have a logical explanation. So as we're working with these symptoms and we um, 
actually working with the soul. People will say you're working with the mind. No, the mind is just in the brain. It's limited to, to this life. But when you work with the soul, you're, you're working with the energy that has consciousness, that has intelligence, that had incarnated, in, that has occupied previous bodies. So whatever symptom you may have now might not have originated in this life but maybe in a previous life. So in other words, as we work around the symptom, sooner or later, we're going to run into a past life. That's what happens. I mean, not all the time. It could be that the issue was a, a few years ago or during childhood, maybe, the, the, maybe during the time in the womb, or even after you died in a past life, um, post-mortem soul entrapment, you know, that, that is what it's called. So, what I like about introspective hypnosis is, is that it is very flexible. I'm able to adapt to that, what the session brings to us because some of, some other techniques fo focus so much on the structure or you need to follow these steps and you cannot deviate. So you make the session, session rigid. And some, some people, when they feel comfortable with what they learned, and it takes some time to learn a technique, don't take me wrong, then what they do is they make that technique a religion and they disregard anything else that, that that technique doesn't believe on, which in my opinion is a big mistake. So that's that's what I like. That it's very flexible. I'm able to deal with things that are happening now. And if that issue happened during the childhood, then you go to childhood. It's, this, it's your soul that is going to take you to that memory. And we're going to work with that memory. If the issue started when, in the womb, then that's where we go. Is your client who's going to take us to different places? Yes, the idea is to kind of follow initial structure, but in the end, it's your client that is going to take you to different um, events, and, and you need to know how to apply the techniques that we use in introspective hypnosis. That, that's what I like about it. And the fact that we, we don't only help our clients, which are the incarnated spirits that come to see us, see us sometimes they come with attached spirits, lost souls, and we need to help them too. That's what I like. Yes. I really love that you're able to give that lost soul a voice because I yes. know there are other ways of, you know, spirit releasement, but in my opinion, this is one of the most powerful ones because you can actually allow them to have a conversation exactly. and for them to tell you the story and to finish whatever is pending for them. Right, right. They're attached because they're lost for whatever reason. Maybe some of them didn't realize that their body died because the body dies, but life continues, right? The soul never dies. So they don't realize that their body died maybe because of the way they died. It could be, um, I don't know, um, under anesthesia in an operating room, or maybe they were using drugs, a drug overdose. And, and when they realize they're in another dimension, they don't understand what is happening. So, so they attach to our clients and they're confused. So we're giving them, as you said, we're giving them a voice. We're helping them understand what happened to them. If they're looking for revenge, then maybe they had an issue with the client, which I call the host. Maybe in this life, maybe in a previous life, we help them finish that, that thing that is unfinished between them. And then we help them go to the light. So Going back to my purpose, that is, I think that is what my purpose is. When I assume, and that's what I feel that when, when they said, okay, we need, we need people, we need people, we need souls to reincarnate so that they can help our brothers and sisters that are lost on the third dimension, right? People will say, but why can't their guides help them? Why can other, why is it that other light beings cannot help them? Because they're low at a very low, they're vibrating at a very low frequency. They're attached to you. They don't see the light. So we need to help them from here. And once they see the light, you have a different team. So it's a team effort. You have a different team that takes over and takes them to the light. So yes, that's what I think is, is my mission, not only uh, teaching and facilitating sessions, but helping these, as you said, souls that don't have a voice, that some others technique ignore. And some religious treat them as demons and maybe insult them and ask them to just go away without even understanding what happened to them and what yeah. they need. Yeah, that's really important. I love that you touched on that. It's not like it's not about church, you know, leave. Right. So, we cannot we cannot do what we do through any I mean, 
using any religion. And I respect all of them, but, but I cannot apply religion in what I do because my clients have different belief systems. So if a client that is Catholic comes to me, I'm not going to use term from another religion because it's not part of their reality. What we do is we get into our client's reality to help them. You know, um, my idea is not to change them to my reality. I need to adapt to theirs. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, to give people an example when it comes to lost souls, I, I'm going to talk about this story that unfolded during my session with you. Sure. So I came to you um, when we talked about some things that I want to bring to the session. I said something and I remember the way I phrased it. I said, every time I sit down and to work on my laptop computer, it feels like I'm rushing ahead of time because it seems like I'm going to run out of time. So that was the key point that I remember that I said without really consciously realizing what it means. And then I said, I tend to have a lot of tech issues. Like my laptop starts heating up sometimes, even turning on Google Chrome, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Things switch off and it's especially around the time when I'm, when I need to work on something. I remember mm -hmm. there was a very intense time during my study years when I was still studying architecture. I had to do, I had a submission and I had literally mm -hmm. 20 minutes left for me to submit my work and everything that could go wrong did go wrong. My tech companies tech uni tech it was it was awful so okay. i was struggling with that for as long as i remember and that was something that i brought to the session and the last memory that i went to was i started seeing like a like a screen in front of me and a lot of programs would start closing off really quickly and then mm -hmm. you would navigate me through the session and you asked me why am I, I am next. And then I, I realized that I'm in my friend's house. We're having a girl's night out. Mm -hmm. And this was the memory of this life. Uh, that's what you used to, we used to do. And they were asking me to tell one of the stories. And you said, what is the story? I said, I don't really want to tell them that story because every mm -hmm. time I do, something happens. And I did tell them that story. The stories they would be interested in is about spirits or what I used mm -hmm. to see and things that would happen with tech or electricity. And I told them that story. I remember we were in the living room and the, the lights started flickering. So they all ran to the kitchen, kind of laughing, kind of scared. And I was like, oh, I told you it's going to happen. And it did. And next thing we know, I you told me to go a bit further. And I couldn't settle for one home. I was drawn in between two homes, one where I was raised and the other mm -hmm. one where we moved to later on. Mm -hmm. and I kept being pushed and pulled towards those two and you said to me you asked what is it that is calling you to the home where you grew up in and straight away I said a spirit and that's where my grandpa passed away mm -hmm. he passed away um, in a corridor he has he had a heart attack and that's when I realized that all the tech problems were to do with my grandpa's spirit mm -hmm. he even said he was trying to finish some work through me because he couldn't stop working. He was leaving his little room where he had like an old architect's drawing board mm -hmm. and he literally fell to his face in a corridor. And that's how he passed away. So when you asked me, you know, what is happening? I said, as a grandpa, I'm standing next to my dead body, but I was still mm -hmm. so focused looking at the drawing room because there was so much work to do mm -hmm. and that's when i kind of started reflecting after the session i said every time i start working myself on something it feels like i'm running out of time out of time but it's not me who's running out of time exactly three two one you're there now What is happening now? I keep being pushed and pulled between two places. Yes, two okay. homes. Yeah, tell me about it. Which two homes? It's like one moment I'm in the house I grew up in and the other time I'm in the next home we moved to. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
So you're going to those two places at the same time? Keep jumping back and forth and right. I can't settle. There we go. So I want you to be in the, the house where you moved to. Stay there. But go back to your previous house. What's keeping you attached to that previous house? Where you lived before you moved? Walk around the house. What's attracting you? What's calling you from the house? The spirit. The spirit. Very good. So walk around the house. And let me know once you find the spirit. I see it clearly. Mm -hmm. It's how always does, there. How does, how does it look? At first it's black, but then I see it shift into yes. a man who's dressed in smart clothes. Very good. So let's talk to this man, as this man who he is. He says, I know. Mm -hmm. So if you know, tell me who he is. It's my dad's dad. It's your dad's dad, it's your grandpa. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ask your grandpa why he is there. He couldn't find a way out. He couldn't find a way out. As your grandpa, if he knows what happened to his body, he's the one that died of a heart attack, right? Yeah, he... It feels like he's still working. Yes. So tell him, grandpa, I have to tell you something, you know, and explain to him what happened to his body. Explain to him that his body died. His spirit, the spirit never dies. But that his body died. He keeps saying that he's addicted to working and there were yes. so many things to do. Mm -hmm. He couldn't leave the project. Couldn't leave the project. Ask your grandpa if I have permission to speak to him, please. Yeah, he says it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Since what? For what? Since direct communication. Oh, I see. Okay. So three, two, one. Grandpa, thank you for the communication today. I understand you have some projects that you need to finish. Which projects are this? Is the plans I'm working on. The plans? Yeah, I'm drawing up the plans. Yes. Mm -hmm. Grandpa, I want you to go back to the moment you felt this pain in your chest. Three. I'm happy now. Yes. I want you to, do you feel this pain in your chest? It's like the heart is about to jump. Yes, I want you to feel that. And as you're feeling that, what happens next, Grandpa? What happens to your body? It's very quiet. It's very quiet. Now you let me know if you see your body down there below. I'm standing next to it. You're standing next to it. Do you understand what just happened? Does it make sense that you're standing next to your body? Yeah, I keep looking to the room, my mm. work room. Yes, but look at the body. You're standing there in the work room, 
but your body is on the floor. It doesn't make sense, does it? Yes. How can you be standing and laying down at the, on the floor at the same time, right? So this is what happened, Grandpa. Your body just died. And you're a spirit. You never die. And the proof is that we're communicating now. The proof is that you still think you're working on the plans, even though those plans don't exist anymore. Nobody's in that house. The house doesn't belong to you. Brigitte has some of my stuff. Yes, okay. But maybe she can look at it. Maybe she can continue those plans later. But it's time for you to go to the light. What's preventing you from going to the light? The home. The home. Mm -hmm. What about the home? There is so much more I should have done. Who says you cannot do it? You can go to the light and you're going to be born again. And you can continue working in other projects. But being a spirit, there's nothing you can do. Brigitte is not in that home anymore. There's other people, right? And then, yes. and then you're close to Brigitte and then your energy is making all these uh, tech devices act up. So she's having an issue. She's not able to complete her work because her devices don't work properly. And that's because it is your energy. Even as we, as, as we started visiting this event, the camera flickered for a moment. The one that we're using now. So it's causing problems. What is the purpose, purpose of you staying here, causing problems to Brigida? Unintentionally, but it's causing problems. Feels like I could have done some work for her because she did the same for a while. Yes. But now she's going to do something else. She's finding a different purpose now. So why don't you say goodbye to Brigida, say goodbye, goodbye to whoever is staying back and go to the light. And you can continue working on projects from there. There are many things that you can do in the light. This is not over. What would you like to do, Grandpa? I think I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? Is that yes. correct? Yes. So now say bye to Brigida and remove your energy that is spinning around her head. It's causing problems. Brigida, say bye to your grandpa. You can tell him or ask him whatever. He's there. Exactly. So, so, so you see, he is the one that was always bringing you then to back to the house, your soul, right? Because back to the house, because hey, the same, we have things to do, right? Yeah, yeah it, it is important what you said, because one of the things that take time to understand uh, what you're learning and practicing hypnosis is that time does not exist. Linear time, past, present, and future is just a creation of the human brain to understand time. But the truth is that everything is happening now. And for the soul, everything is happening now. An example, you could have lived alive in Egypt 3,000 years ago where you were, I don't know, buried alive. But for your soul, that just took place. And if you were trapped in that experience, because you, let's, let's put it this way, you didn't die properly, right? It's called soul entrapment. That's still happening for you. So if you go to, um, you get into an elevator or you get into the metro, you're going to feel what you're feeling in that place where you buried alive. So going back to uh, your, your, your grandfather, he passed away of a heart attack, instant. So one minute you're alive, one minute you're dead. And, and some of these souls don't realize what happened to them. They don't understand 
and your grandpa said, I'm looking, right? He said, I'm looking at my body on the floor. Mm -hmm. was, didn't he say that? Was that, yeah. that was your session, right? He said okay. that, yeah. Right? So, okay. Does it make sense that you're looking at your body on the floor and then you're communicating with me? Do you understand what happened to you? Right? So for your grandpa thought he was still alive. He was still working. He had still things to do. And he was, since he was close to you, when they get close to us, they transmit things to us through our aura. And that's what you were feeling. And I assume that the issues that you had with your devices was his energy close to you causing that. And I'm trying to work on something. How old are you there? Feels quite recent. Yes, very good. Continue. What happens next? Like everything just stops working. Everything stops working. Yes, like what? What stopped working? I come seeing a lot, a lot of programs shutting down one after another mm -hmm. programs from where seems like it's on the screen on the screen yeah it's like on my laptop or yeah. yes mm -hmm. well, the screen is much bigger than that mm -hmm. What happens as the programs are shutting down? Because I want everything to work normally. Yes. I get tense. Have, yes. have you had any other issues with your devices? Um, my computer is not heating up that much unless I turn on like four <laughs> programs okay. that it's normal for it to do so. But it's been very quiet. It's been very good so far. Okay. And during yeah. the session, it, it was my last memory I went to. I My eyes were going so fast when we got into that memory. That at one point, I kind of half opened and closed it, and mm -hmm. I could see it as clear as day. The grandpa, I knew it was mm -hmm. him. It was just like a shadow right next to where I was laying down. Mm -hmm. And since I couldn't, um, I didn't know what was happening on the tech side when we were talking. During the session, you even said, Grandpa, I saw the screen go black. Mm -hmm. You know, you're mm -hmm. causing these issues. Yeah. So everything ties in so, so nicely. And I went, the next day I visited my parents. And my dad was really close to, to his dad. But the, mm -hmm. the grandpa passed away way before me. I wasn't even born. He passed away mm -hmm. pretty young. And yeah. I was so I was drinking tea and I was so curious because I know the exact layout of the flat where I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, like I never want to check, you know, the sessions, whether something is true or not, because I take the healing part of it. Mm -hmm. But there was that urge and I was like wondering where was grandpa's working room? And I didn't even have to ask that. My mom was the first one to say that to my dad. And she goes, oh, I'm just wondering, you know, where was your dad's working room? And he goes, in the little room. And I was mm -hmm. like, there, there are three rooms he could have worked in any room, really. And I was like, did he, do you know anything about, you know, how, how he fell and things like that? Because I'm so sure I knew exactly everything. And mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, he fell on his face, face in the kitchen. And that's exactly how I saw him. So there, there are things that I couldn't have known. It was mm -hmm. him transmitting that information, you know? Interesting. Yeah, that, that's what happens. Now, we even talked about your career, right? Because yeah. you, didn't meet, you didn't meet your grandpa. He passed away before you were born. So we, I, I even asked you, I'm wondering why you chose to be an architect. He was close to you. He was bringing you back to his room, right? Yeah. I'm wondering why you chose to be an architect, for example, right? Yeah, I think there was a nudge there. 
And I and my dad said said was there a lot of project that he left behind? He said, listen, he was helping students with their projects, and he was mm-hmm. also, he said it was around thirty or forty projects that he left behind. So no wonder oh, wow. he kept working, because yeah. he was one of the most famous uh, architects in this city okay. of mine. So there was a lot to do, and he kept saying there was so much to do. So there was right. so much to do, right? So, right. So so. We were talking about the symptoms, right? And and how these symptoms do not make sense. You you said one thing during the interview, which actually raised a red flag. A red flag. I didn't. I'm not going to tell you the other things that I could be that could be causing that symptom. But I, I decided to pay special attention. I feel that I'm running out of time. That didn't make sense. You're not running out of time. Yeah. That's that's not you. Why would you feel that you're running out of time? That was coming from him. So that's a symptom. You see, as as you're working around the symptom, as you're working through memories, you get you get to the root cause. What's causing it? Yeah, and there was one more beautiful um, thing that was said there, where I don't remember how he expressed himself, but he said it's been it's been a while. And you asked what what was that, and he said that I had a direct communication because I used to communicate with him, but just having that voice for him mm-hmm. and that communication mm-hmm. was super important mm-hmm. and that's why I appreciate it so much for giving those lost souls a voice and for them to share and to understand what's happening yeah. yes yes I well, this all started about lost souls and giving them a voice obviously when I was watching Aurelio's videos and then when I trained with him I shadow, actually shadow him. He was not teaching classes. I was already practicing QHC, but he was teaching classes. So I shadowed him for 38 sessions. We did 38 sessions in six days because he's wow. well known in the Hispanic community. So a lot of people book sessions with him. But when he, he was gone already. And a, a week later, somebody booked a session with me. And it's a lady from, from um, Georgia that booked a session from uh, with me, Georgia State. Right? Booked a session with me and, and, and brought some relative with her. So as I was facilitating sessions, this spirit manifested. I, it was my first solo introspective hypnosis, actually the second solo introspective hypnosis, but my first solo interaction with the lost soul. And I felt calm and I remember what I learned with Aurelio. So I gave this soul, lost soul, this attachment, a voice. It, it manifested, if I'm not mistaken, this session number 10 in my channel, <clears throat> my YouTube channel. So I gave that voice, I mean, that soul a voice who had manifested actually as a pain in her foot. And that soul called my client's aunt who was waiting in the family room because I work from my home office. And to make the long story short, the, the soul was there to give a message to this lady saying, I'm sorry, I, I was killed, I didn't abandon you. The story was that this, this lost soul and my client's aunt were husband and wife in a previous life. He was killed, maybe in old times, right? He was killed and this woman thought that this guy had abandoned her and the kids. And that's what prevent, was, was preventing the spirit from going to the light. So he kept waiting for her, attached to her knees, and saw the opportunity to deliver the message. After he delivered the message, he was able to go to the light. What, what would have happened if we didn't give that lost soul a voice? You know, people have to stay there waiting or lost or trying to sort things out, you know? So it is very important, as you said, to give them a voice, to understand what happened to them. And Antonio, for you, uh, since you didn't start working, you didn't start in hypnosis with that knowledge and that experience, how to go about the uh, lost souls. What, how was it for you when, in the first session, you were not taught that, but you came across a lost soul? Well, um, I, was, I was running into things that didn't make sense during the session. But since I had not been trained, QHHT does not believe in lost souls. You're not even, I was not even allowed to, because other people were talking about it, we were not even about, allowed to talk about that in the, on the forum, the practitioner's forum. So my clients were experiencing things and symptoms that didn't make sense. And I, I didn't know what it was. So that triggered me. When I started watching Aurelio's videos, then I, I noticed what he was doing. You know, these lost souls were manifesting themselves through pain or, or some mark would appear in, 
in their face or involuntary movements, data or range, or answers to questions that didn't make sense out of context. So little things that was allowing Aurelio to detect that those lost souls. So when I started facilitating my sessions, I picked up on those. Oh, okay, so maybe there is something here. Let me start applying what I had seen Aurelio doing his videos and it was working, you know? But yeah, when I was able to train with him is that I got all the knowledge and then with Jose Luis Cabuli. So that is the big difference in what we do, Brigida. You took the class, you know, you know uh, how that works and that makes the biggest difference in what we do. Yes. Some people don't understand. Some people um, judge us for what we do. I lost friends. Oh, you're talking to spirits. This is occultism. You know, I lost a good friend because, oh, you're practicing this now. Mm -mm. I don't want to do anything with you. So um, we're misunderstood in what we do. Some others say oh, only, only priests can do an exorcism, but I'm not doing an exorcism. I'm not throwing yeah. this lost soul. I'm not casting them away. It's like, I'm helping them. I'm, I'm talking to them. I respect them. I love them. The, the, the love comes in place again. I love them. And and they go, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really important. Just a couple of days ago, I had a session with someone and the whole session I had to spend only on entity because it caused so much throughout such a long period of time that uh. it was just, and you could see how a person's um, attitude changes. Yeah. No? Yes. Yes. If you, if I were, talk, were talking to you, and and that spirit, it would be very different. The the, the expressions, the energy, um, the words, everything changes, and and not every soul wants to be helped. If you want, if you want to put it that way, some of them don't want to talk to you. If if they know you're new, they might play with you a little bit. They will use what we call the special effects, right? They will make noises and growl, and we don't pay attention to that. But after certain times, as you ask them questions, I, they, they really feel that you're there to help them, not to take them away. They open up. It takes time. You, one of the things that I learned actually with computers and networks was patience, you know, trying to find the right path for communication between devices. I, am, I was applying the same thing with navigating past life, navigating memories, and patience talking or communicating with these souls because they cannot go at our pace. We go at their pace. If they're taking forever, then there we are. We need to just keep talking to them and be patient. Yeah, that's very, very true. And now I know a couple of people watching this will want to uh, go for your teachings. So mm -hmm. Antonio, how often are you planning during a year to do your classes and to allow people to come and learn with you? Yeah, well, I, I already um, scheduled some of the classes that are, that are coming for the, the, rest of the um, yeah, rest of the year. But I plan to have classes like every, for next year, it's going to be like every three months, more or less. I, I prefer to do less classes because I'm now, I'm also doing workshops. We're talking about soul entrapment. We're talking about um, healing the feminine, the wounded feminine energy. And then I'm working on an advanced technique class that I'm going to um, advertise soon. So um, there's going to be opportunities if they go to my website. Um, we have my website, antoniosanjo.com. Um, if I want to put it there. Way. Yeah. So they they want to join in one of the classes and learn what we do. It's, it's a beautiful technique, not because I teach it. It's because it's a, I'm, I'm not... I didn't invent anything. I'm, I'm using techniques that I learned from others and those learned that technique from others. The thing here is that each of us are given that these techniques, our own energy, our own style, our own love, and is knowing how to combine all of this knowledge to help our clients, what makes a difference. So if you feel like this is what you want to do and you want to help other souls, um, register for one of the classes. It's not only going to change your clients, Life and I call them clients, I don't call them patients because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not even a clinical hypnotherapist because I don't want to follow protocols and scripts and, and have the session rigid. But um, it's gonna also help, it's gonna help you change your life. I'm not the same person that I was when I started doing this. I healed my own things through my clients because I'm gonna be triggered during the sessions with our own stuff. So it's it's beautiful. I'm I'm very happy and I feel blessed for having the opportunity of practicing this type of hypnosis. 
Yeah, for sure. I remember when I was taking um, classes with you, there were people, students, uh, who would get triggered by certain things. Right. And the symptoms would come up even in the class. And you were so good, you would put these people uh, kind of on the spot and say, hey, we're doing a hypnosis session on you right now because mm -hmm. something is coming up. And right. such beautiful stories, stories would happen and the healing would take place. And honestly, yes. like these classes, as you said, it's not only that you're going to be helping others. It felt like I healed parts of myself throughout those six days. And you in such a safe space with people who also want to learn the same like you and everyone is so open because yes. you, you experience hypnosis on one another as well. Right. You have to put all cards on a table and it becomes such a trusting safe space because you look after us too. And it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know, after I finished those classes, that whole course, I was like, I needed some time because I needed to let everything to sink in. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when it did, I just didn't want to stop practicing because every single session with a person, it's, it's almost like sacred. That's the way I could. Yes, it. exactly. That's how I see it. This is a sacred technique because... People are coming and they open our souls to us saying, please help me. It's a soul asking for help. And that's what we're doing. It's a sacred moment. That's the way I see it. And that's why I'm very, um, I'm changing things now and a little bit of the structure of the class because I want to attract the right people, people that come with the right intentions, right? Because in this field of hypnosis, you can do two things, Brigitte. You can be a, story, an, a storyteller, a researcher, or if you want to call it that way, even though we're not, you can call it, you can do healing, but it's not that we heal our clients. We help them heal themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just want to do past life regressions and find information about past life and understand who you were, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use that as therapy and to, to help this all understand what happened, what lessons are pending, uh, what symptoms are being brought from that life, what lessons are being brought from that life, what relationships were pending from this life, you can use, do therapy on this soul and give an understanding, and that's what healing takes place. So, yes, I, I, that's, that's what I like in, in the classes, and I'm glad that you had that experience. That's what I try to project, and things happen in the classes. When I created the class, when I created a structure, I didn't envision that. Uh, all, I, all I said is, okay, how do I put into words and steps what I learned from Aurelio? Because Aurelio didn't say, oh, this is step number one, step number two. This is how to do an interview. This is how to do an induction. He was not explaining any of that. He was explaining me the reasoning behind the techniques only, right? So I put everything in place. But then I noticed that as they were passing by and as we were doing these short exercises, these symptoms were coming to the surface. And by the last day, we were ready to address those symptoms in practice sessions. It has been happening in every single class. So people say, oh, I healed this, I healed that, or I got this understanding, I got triggered. So it happens. I don't know how to explain it, uh, but I'm sure at, the, at, all, at all times we're being guided by light beings because if you took this class, Brigitte, and you're practicing hypnosis, this is what you came to do. This is This is... This is, if not your mission, part of your mission. And we need to accept it. We need to embrace it. And we need to respect it. Since you started talking about things coming up in classes, right? I have noticed mm -hmm. that some things uh, start coming up for the client even prior, way prior to their session. Yes. So I'd say just notice, take note, acknowledge that it's there. Because for me, even before being connected to you through Leo... I started having certain dreams that didn't make sense to me because it was a repetitive dream that I haven't had before. Mm -hmm. So I used to have my repetitive dreams and some stuff were coming up regarding children. And I was like, I don't know what this is. It's a, it's a small child. I would dream of it. And I don't know if it's mine, if it's future child, if it's past child. And I couldn't make sense of it. And I remember I was meditating one day, sitting down, just being still. 
And I saw a spirit of a child right in front of me and it opened its arms and showing me, signaling, open your arms. And I was like, I don't know, okay. So with my eyes closed, I opened my arms and it went straight into my belly, almost like with that hug, you know, it went straight okay. into my belly. And I have no idea, I started bawling, crying so much. Mm. And I don't cry very often. So for me, okay. that was something really, really important. And in the session that I had with you, okay. um, there was a, a attachment to my to my belly, like umbilical right. cord. And yes, that's where that child came up. But I haven't even thought of that story at least a couple of weeks prior to this session, you know. But it, okay. it started way before for me. Yeah, we started working. We started working with that, and and then you came up with the explanation. Yeah. I feel right. I you felt and you understood the connection of that energy with you. Yeah, and you were also getting emotional. So yes, all these things take place, but everything took place because you decided to be open and, and be guided through the process and keep an open mind. So you, you, you flow with the whole session. So it was beautiful to watch. Yes. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and whatever comes up in the session, sometimes um, Antonio or me might be asking one thing, but sometimes some other stuff is coming up. I say just yeah. speak up. Because for me, when, when I was releasing that spirit of a child, I kept saying honey in my head. And I'm like, why am I saying honey when I'm releasing the spirit? Yeah. And then it hit me so bad. It was that sense of motherhood that this is my child, that something mm -hmm. isn't finished. We got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's when I started crying. I think this is my child. And this mm -hmm. child died because of me in the past life. And I came to yeah. you with a lot of guilt. I said, I give you an example. I said, Antonio, you know, as if I took, um, I borrowed a pen from someone. And yeah. if I broke it by accident, and I phrased it like that, I'd feel as if I killed someone. Yeah, and, 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 and to me, that symptom didn't make sense. You see, I feel guilt all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you done? No, I don't know, but I feel it. So that symptom doesn't have a logical explanation, but it was coming from there, for example, you see? Yeah, yeah. awesome. So yeah. you are working on second book right now yes yes the uh, spanish version is already published in amazon i am working on the translation to english so in, is spanish is my native language so i write it in spanish first and what is the name of it in spanish in spanish is guiando a las almas perdidas which translates to guiding lost souls it's helping spirits go back to the light through hypnosis so i, I explain the concept of these souls and energy and lost souls and i kind of explain uh, how we deal with them. And I, I put there a lot of cases. I changed the names of my clients. A few of them allowed me to use their names. Um, but I ex basically explain what we do and how we do it, why we do it, and how to help these lost souls. The reason why I, um, I decided to write that book is because I wanted, I was referring people taking the class to other books read about this on, with, from this author, and the information is really good, but don't pay attention to the part where this person talks about demons and evil, and because I don't believe in any of that. I don't believe in evil, Satan, hell, haven't found any of that in years. Neither has Aurelio with over 30 years of experience and, and Jose Luis Cabuli either. So I said, okay, who, who can come up with a book that can, um, help others that are learning this because a lot of people want to learn how to work with spirits and that's not, for a lot of people that's the main motivation why they take the class and I said okay I need to write about this I need to write about this and create kind of a manual or a guide and, and I don't know what you want to call it and that's how that's what that is why I wrote that book because not everybody is going to be able to take my class but hey maybe they can if you're practicing hypnosis and, and you want to understand what we do, read that book. It has a lot of information. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would, would benefit, and, and a lot of lost souls will benefit from that if you learn that. Yeah, I'll link both of your books down below. In, in the spirit world, right, there's no right or wrong, bad or good, and there's no, there's no evil. So I see 
there are no good and bad spirits. There are spirits more evolved than others. There are, this is a different level of evolution. So let me put it this way, right? Let, let's say that you were, you were, a, you were a bad, they're going to call it bad person in this life, right? Even though there's no good and bad, I don't see it that way. And once you die, you, I don't know, you, I don't know, you feel guilty about it. And, and then you, you say, I'm so sorry that I make all these mistakes. According to religion, if, if you repent, right, and, and you have some forgiveness, you can go to heaven, for example, right? Now, if you have somebody that doesn't know about anything about religion, that doesn't know anything about karma, um, was born in, in, in a geographical location that doesn't know anything about this, and what they do is kind of the normal, you know, and, and treating people this way or killing people or are you going to judge that soul that didn't have the knowledge? Are you going to send them to hell uh, forever, you know, because it was killing people, didn't know? It, so in other words, how can we judge spirits for not knowing? You know, there are different levels of evolution. One is if, the spirit know, if you know you're doing wrong, then yeah, there's, there's, there's karma, which I think I take it as the law of balance. You, you're going to experience what you make others experience is cause and effect, right? But if you don't know what you're doing, and and and, and how can how can people judge you? How can other souls judge you and send you to hell? That's that's the way I see it. So it's different levels of evolution. I don't see good and bad and evil, because in the end, everything is about learning. This planet is a school called Planet Earth. And we come here to learn. And we come here to learn in which, in which we cannot in the spirit world, which is through emotions, right? Once you have incarnated, you feel pain, you feel fear, you feel hate, you feel love. So you're learning suffering, but you're also learning love. So this is a school. Yeah. So it's very much about balance. And it's about, I think, that um, idea of victim and the offender, you're, right. You already know what I'm going to be talking about. So yes, I'd like yes, to yes. expand on this. <laughs> right. We, we, we play different roles in our lives. We, we have um, the victim, we have the offender, as you called it, and we have the observer. And we play different roles, right? And we're affected by all of them. So <clears throat> when people come to see us, <clears throat> most of the time, they come because they feel victims, they're in the victim role. And actually, that is the most difficult thing to accomplish during a session is to make our clients understand that there are no victims. And they realize that during the session. But when, when you feel a victim, even if you were molested, raped, or maybe your parents did something to you, if you feel like a victim, we need to remember that every victim has been an offender before. Let me give you an example. In one of the classes, uh, it was a demo session. These volunteers, a female volunteer, um, for the demo session, started the session, and we navigated, I don't know, three, four, three or four memories. In, in, in each, each of those memories, <clears throat> she had been molested during childhood. By the third or fourth memory, she could not take it anymore. And while in a trance, she, she screamed, not again, why me? right? She, she was feeling a victim. I said, okay, <clears throat> let's find out why you. I'm going to count from five to one, and I want you to look for a past life where you might have done something similar, right? Or anything that had triggered this for you now. Five, four, three, two, one. She went to the life of a soldier. She was, back then, was a man, described the uniform, the, the battlefield, the emotions. He was hungry. He was lonely. Uh, he even talked about this war doesn't, this battle, this war doesn't make any sense. But then he started describing how he was getting into these houses and raping women. And as he was raping these women, I was asking questions and you could see that he, he didn't care. He says, yes, I'm sorry that she's screaming, crying. She's asking me to go, but I need to do this. It's been so long since I didn't have a woman with me. And she was doing the same thing one after the other one. Love balance. Now it's the, her chance to experience what he made in that life, all this experience. 
So there's no good and bad. This you see. So going again, is, is this a bad or spirit or good spirit? No, because if this spirit only knew that whatever you're doing to somebody, you're going to experience yourself later in life, you would not do it. So yes. we're it's not good and bad. We're just ignorant of things. How can we be judged for that? I really like the example you gave, uh, I think, in previous video where you used this example of taking off on a plane and coming back to see yes. your complete okay. the mission. Would you like to expand on that? Uh, absolutely. Sure. So that is the example I use to every time I want to explain a concept, I that try to think of an example, an easy way to, to understand, right? So when people ask me, what is a life between life session, right? That's a session that is, is, is focused for the soul. Every session is for the soul, but is to understand your e eternal identity, who you really are as a soul. You, you right now, your name is Brigida, but Brigida is the name of this body with this ego incorporated and, and that's the name that your parents gave you. But in the spirit world, your name could be X, Y, Z, whatever. Shania could be your name in spirit world. It's a different name. Sometimes it's a vibration, a sound, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. so, so in order to understand why is it that we are reincarnating and what happens in the spirit world, I was given the example of a firefighter. It's just one of these pilots, war pilots, right? They, they get on a plane and they fly a mission and they throw bombs and take pictures and they're they, they reconnaissance, whatever. They go back to the base and then they have a debriefing. Okay, let's see which of the objective you accomplished, which of your goals you accomplished. Okay, you did this, this, this. You were not able to take this picture. You were not able to do this. So the following day, you get on another plane and you fly another mission with other things also to, com to accomplish, to complete. You come back to the base and do a debriefing. Okay, great. You accomplished this, this, but this time you missed this. So the following day, you get another plane, fire mission, come back, and so on and so forth. I want you to think of, of the pilot as your soul. You are the one flying the plane. And I just want you to think of the bodies as the planes. So right now, when I'm flying a plane, you know, model Antonio, you know, and I'm going to accomplish my mission. Once I go back to the spirit world, I'm going to get a debriefing. Okay, Antonio. You were so, supposed to learn these lessons. You were supposed to do this, and this was your mission. Let's see what you accomplished. Okay. Okay, you did great here. You did okay here. In this other aspect, not so good. Okay? No problem. Will you have another chance? So you're going to get another body. You're going to find lessons. You're going to choose the body that first suits, that best suits that lesson. You're going to this time make agreements with members of your group or other groups to be your, your, your wife or to be your parents. And, and this is what you're going to experience. And through that experience, you're going to learn such and such lesson. And that's what we're doing. We're coming back and then going back to base and coming back and we're learning. We're completing our objectives. Our soul is experiencing, it's learning, it's evolving. Yeah. That's the way I see it. And you said something, I believe, during the class, you said something along the lines of, we didn't come here to be happy. We came here to learn. So the more you enjoy yeah. learning or challenges, the happier you'll be. And I think a lot of people have an issue with that, especially these days, looking at pictures of everyone, you know, in perfect places, perfectly dressed. Mm -hmm. And the society, you know, kind of pressuring you to feel happy. Why not feeling happy? You know, yeah, and to get happy? likes. <laughs> yeah, and to get likes. And I think yeah. that was a very powerful sentence for me. Sometimes I would I would write down quotes, even from the class. And you okay. also said something along the lines where in order to better understand why you're given a lesson like this or why this has happened to you, kind of think back what your soul might have thought around you the time. You need to learn. Yes. Yeah. And what, what will you be learning with this experience? I believe you are talking with uh, guys from the Black Pill channel, if I'm correct. Okay, okay, yes. Where you talked about this, and I really like the example of, you know, let me track back and let me stay. By getting, for example, this dysfunctional family, what my soul thought at that time that I need to learn with this? Yeah, so, so some people might not understand when we say this, and some people might get upset. But it's, it's, like, it's, it's like you going to school, being a kid, 
Okay. Some people like schools because they want to learn and, and they want to experience things and interact with the teacher and classmates. Some kids don't want to go to school and they will find any opportunity to try and skip school. So this is a school. We didn't, the way I see it is that we didn't come here to be happy because happiness is, if you get it, it's going to be very short because you don't, it not only depends on you, it depends also on people around you. You can be happy and then something happens to your father, you know, something happens to your mother or I don't know, let's say you have a brother and, you, and your brother gets in drugs, right? Now you're not happy, you're worried about your brother. So the happiness doesn't depend on you. So we don't come here to be happy. We come here to learn. And that's that's the biggest problem for, 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 for people and why they get frustrated because they try so hard to have money, to have material things, and to be happy. And they don't, they, you're not getting it because you're not getting it because that's not what you, you came here for. You came here to learn. And you can learn in love, which is beautiful, but you also learn in suffering. And suffering is an amplifier for learning. The, the, the lessons that I learned the best and the most profound lesson for me were the ones that I learned when I suffered. So who's going to, who's going to enjoy being in this school? The ones that enjoy learning, that enjoy the challenges, then they're the ones that will be happy. If you, if you want to say that is happiness. So um, another thing is like people ask themselves, why me? Why am I going through this? Why? Oh my God, I had bad luck with my parents. You know, with my parents, I went through hell. They mistreated me. They ignored me. I felt abandoned. And, and you complain, complain, complain to the victim, bro, right? But here's the news. We choose our parents based on the things we need to learn. So it is not coincidence that you were born in their family. You chose to be born in their family for a specific reason. You can complain forever. You're not going to accomplish anything. But if you stop and say, okay, Let's assume for a moment that my soul, my spirit, um, planned this lesson for me, that I actually chose, if you don't believe in this, that I say that I actually chose my parents, what was I supposed to learn from this? And here's the clue. We start by experiencing the opposite of what we're here to learn, what we're here for, to learn. The opposite, what is the opposite to be mistreated and, and abandonment and, you know, is, is I don't know, self-love and, and, and even, even, even more challenging when you have your kids, how do you give them love when you didn't get it at home? You don't know what love is. You were treated this way. You felt abandoned. And now you need to give that love and give that nurse, nourishment to your kids. So I see that's a lesson. And when you see life in, from that point of view, it changes completely for you. And, and the, the trick is not to run away from the lessons because there's no running away. You run away from the lesson, that lesson is going to chase you. And it's going to come back to you disguised as another person or another situation. Embrace it. You know, a book that is really good for this is Your Soul's Plan by Robert Schwartz. Very good book about pre-birth planning. So embrace the lesson, embrace what you have to learn, face it, allow your souls to experience. If it's loss, if it's sadness, if it's fear, experience it. Once you learn that, that session is gonna disappear from your radar, but get ready because there's another one coming. This is a school, right? Yes. That's the way I see it. Realizing and acknowledging those patterns, it's, it's quite simple as we know ourselves, you know what we struggle yes. with. And just kind of go with that. Right. We talked about during class and how we conduct our interviews. And people don't realize when they're telling us about their lives. But you saw how we can detect a pattern, something that is happening over and over in different times in their lives, through different people, different situations, even if they move to a different country. You know, when there's a pattern in your life, pay attention. That means that there's something that you need to learn from that. And this journey starts in the womb already journey of a soul would you like to yes. expand on this a little bit yes absolutely so one aspect of our lives that is not taken into consideration when when we go to let's say a psychologist or a psychiatrist so if you i don't know go to a specific hypnosis uh using a specific any hypnosis technique is our time in the womb 
because we're really affected. And in a way, we're programmed by everything that happens to us in the womb. Why? Because while we're in the womb, we are inside our mother's vibrational vibratory field, right? We're affected with everything she feels, she thinks, she says. We're affected by everything that is happening around her. If she's being mistreated, if our father is, is, is abusing her, if, I don't know, if our grandparents are telling her, I told you not to get pregnant, you should get an abortion, right? And depending on the culture, maybe, maybe that woman was born in a culture where women are there, let's say, to just obey men or please men. So anyway, but all of that that is taking place with your mom and around your mom, it affects you. And remember that your, your mom has her own traumas, her own fear, phobias, her own pending issues, lessons, right? To learn in this life, her own self, I mean, soul entrapment, you know, things from other lives. And you're inside of her. You're being affected by all of that. Here's the thing, at that moment, we are not able to separate. We're not able to understand who belongs to us. I mean, what belongs to us and what belongs to her. We, we, we feel all of that as ours. When we're born, we forget about it. But everything is in the subconscious mind already. We have it already been programmed by what took place during the womb. An example, for, an example could be, uh, let, let's say, right, that your mother was pregnant with you and you know you're going to be a girl, right? And you, and you, you hear your father saying, oh, I want this one to be a boy. I want this one to be a boy so bad. I, I would not know what I would do if this one is not a boy. And then you know you're going to be a girl. How is that going to affect you? How is it going to affect your soul? I know I'm going to be a girl, so I, I need to do, when I'm born, I'm going to do whatever it takes to please my father because I need to make it up to him, you know? So once you're born, you start this pattern of pleasing people, you know? Or maybe maybe your mother saying, I think I'm going to abort this baby. I'm going to abort this baby. And you say, I'm not, I'm not even going to move from here. I don't want them to realize I'm here because I can be killed. And when you're born, that is the type of uh, behavior that you're going to have in life. You don't want to have any confrontation. You don't want to be close to people. You're afraid for your life. And what happened is that you made your emotions that didn't belong to you in the first place. So that's a, uh, some of the things that happen in the womb. Yeah, I'm going to share a story as well. This is not um, emotionally connected. I didn't dig that deep into it. But mm -hmm. as an example of my mother when she was pregnant with my brother, mm -hmm. um, she said one of the scariest moments when she was pregnant with him was she saw a burning house and the house in a house, someone that she knew lived in. And okay. she got terrified and she said, I started screaming and I touched my belly and it was just like, it's a lot. My brother was born with, um, it seems like a birthmark, but it's in the shape of a fire flame on oh, his chest. you see? Okay, you see? And she said, the moment I saw that, I knew exactly what that is connected to. Right, I see. Yeah, that, a lot of things can happen. Even once you're born, if, if I don't know, if they gave your mother general anesthesia, right? You're born and you don't feel your mother. And you hear your mother talking to you and they take you away. You know, some, some, some babies are thinking, some souls are thinking, oh, just kill my mother. They're feeling this, this guilt, uh, this fear, or they were not able to receive the first hug from the mother as they were holding them. They feel the separation. So a lot of things, the way, the way you're born. If it was just natural delivery, if, if it was a C-section, all of that affects us, believe it or not. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you for, for sharing and talking about this. No problem. Now, people who will want to go and, and learn from you, mm -hmm. uh, would you like to just kind of condense it a little bit more? What can people expect to learn from you, even though I know it's on your website, uh, in yeah. introspective hypnosis? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, number one, get ready because it's, it's intense. Um, you, you experience this. I enjoy talking. You can tell. Right? I enjoy talking. So um, I'll be sharing a lot of information during the class. And yes, I, I mean, I, I record sections, so not the whole class, sections of the class, but I give a manual. So what are you going to learn? 
Mm, you're going to, I divided introspective hypnosis in six steps, starting with the induction. The, I mean, it started with the interview, right? The right way to interview somebody. An interview is just, just not asking for the name and, and or what is it that you want to get during the session and what are your questions. There's a lot of things that take place during the interview. Even I will say that the induction starts during the interview, establishing rapport, uh, asking the right questions, um, getting the phrases that they might be coming from another experience, getting the symptoms that do not make sense. So all of those things happen during the interview. And I will say that a successful session depends on a successful interview because we're going to be taking our notes, how to take the notes, what I'm going to write down about. Those notes are going to act as a GPS. So that's the interview. And then you'll learn how to do uh, inductions, you know. So people say, okay, no, but I can just read a piece of paper and do my induction. Well, no, <laughs> not in what we do. Uh, you, you'll get the scripts, but I'm against scripts because if you're, number one, if you read, you're not paying attention to what is happening to your client. Before you even finish your induction, your client might be experiencing things already because you, you're making the script rigid uh, because your client will feel that you're reading to them and they might feel disrespected. So not one induction works for everybody. You need to understand what type of client you have in front of you. And I'll show you how to do some tests to determine if, you, if your client is visual, if your client is kinesthetic, if your client is, I don't know, left brain, like tries to analyze everything. So you're going to learn different inductions and you learn how to use the induction that is best for your client, not for you, right? Also the induction that works best for online sessions. And then we're going to start step number three. We're going to navigate memories. And in this case, we're going to navigate sad memories. And, and I encourage my clients to navigate sad memories because number one, I don't think my, our clients are coming to us to tell us how happy they are in their lives, right? Uh, their sad memories are related and associated to these emotions they're feeling. So they're going to go to these events and we're going to start applying techniques. And as we do that, they're going to start going deeper into a trance and they're going to start experiencing different things. And once we navigate a few memories, and as we work with the symptoms, because we're reading our, we're using our notes, right? Our what we wrote down during the interview as a GPS, uh, we're going to start also finding the origin of certain things or certain symptoms that again do not make sense or relationship issues. You name it, we're going to be working with that. And yes, in that step of working with the origins. Um, I, I explain how to um, do a regular and, and standard past life regression. If, if there is anything such as a standard past life regression, how to do a past life regression and how to use a past life regression with introspective hypnosis. One thing is to take somebody through past life regression, like steps one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But when clients in our session go to a past life, most of the time they go to the moment they're dying because it, that symptom they have might could be associated with the agony of that body. So what do we do then, you see? So you're gonna learn all of that. You're also going to learn how to help lost souls, how to detect them, how to communicate with them, how to help them. And at the end, obviously we're gonna help learn how to bring our clients out of the trance properly. There's, there's different ways on which you can do this, but it's very important to know what you're doing when you're taking clients to past lives or memories, because if you don't know what you're doing, they can bring some of the symptoms they were feeling back then in those lives, in those bodies to this life. So all about that, and, and I explain a little bit of the technology that, that, uh, that we use and, and how to do online sessions. I also talk about the mentoring group, which is a small fee, um, it's $10 a month. And then we get together on Zoom once you're not forced to join that, but um, we get together on Zoom for, for three, three and a half hours, depends, once a month. And then I give you access to a platform where you can ask questions so we help each other. And then you connect with others that are a member of the mentoring group and you can keep practicing. So support is there. Do you have ongoing support? This is what you really want to do, right? So it's, as I said, 
this technique is not about finding who you were in a past life or if you were from other planets. It's not here to use the session as an oracle, ask questions like, I want to know if I should move to another country, if I'm going to marry. No, no, we, we're here we're helping, as you said, this is a sacred technique. You're helping a soul overcome issues. And with the entrapment of, this, of the soul in, in past lives, in the womb, or even after uh, the time they are dying in a past life. So it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's not because I teach it. I, I, I really enjoy this technique and, and the feedback that I get from people is that they're, they're experiencing the same. Yeah, that's for sure. And the extended support you have after the classes are finished, I think it's so amazing. Not only that you're gonna have your own colleagues, you know, students to, to go back to, to practice with, but you also have a group of people who have had a had a class with you some time right. ago, right? Right, right, right. So you have you have people at different levels. Yeah. But but the good thing with the mentoring group is whoever is there is because they really want to practice. They really want to keep learning. And when we get together, they're bringing questions about things that they found in their sessions, right? And as I answer to those questions, everybody learns. So we all keep learning during that time. And people committed with the technique and you're going to find others really to help you. If you're a new student and you just finished, hey, can I have a practice session with one of you? People say, yeah, I'm, I'm available. Let's do this. And that's how we help each other. So it's, it's been working beautifully. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that group. And that's something that people were asking for. If we could have, if you could do mentoring, so we, I put everybody together. So another thing that we're doing is that when there's a new class that just finished, I give them like a couple of weeks so to review the material, to allow everything to sink in. And then I put them together to practice. So I bring people from the mentoring group to the people that finished the class two weeks um, ago, and we all practice. And that way we keep evolving. That's amazing. We, I have a class actually uh, coming, uh, it starts uh, next Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. It's on the, uh, let me check my camera, it's on the 20, 22nd, hold on. It's on the 20, on the 22nd, we start six days. Okay, okay, awesome. And now for the workshops, um, can mm -hmm. anyone join your workshop? Anybody can join the workshop. In the workshop, I, um, things that happen, right? I, I explain a concept. Two workshops I've been uh, facilitating is number one, soul entrapment. I explain the concept of soul entrapment and, and what can cause the symptoms and how to deal with it just, just for an hour. And then I give, I don't know, 30 minutes for questions. So people ask questions, but then what I do is I ask for volunteers. So I write down the names and I, and I put all those names in a, in a paper in a bag and then I start calling names. And then we, you witness live session, I mean, live online sessions, right? And you get to see what happens. So last time I was able to facilitate four sessions. We get breaks after each session and then we have like a 30 minute uh, lunch break, right? But um, you get to see what people experience. Uh, as you watch this, you're going to get triggered by all of these things. You're going to also get something out of that. And that's a, that is a comment that I, that I get from people that attended these workshops. I was able to get this. I, I, I was able to heal this. And I had this bending issue. And by listening to what you were saying or witnessing what the volunteers were experiencing in the session, they were able to accomplish these changes. So the last two were, um, were actually um, they were sold out. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. The next one is coming on, um, which is healing the wounded feminine energy. I think a lot of seems, people will be interested in this. Yeah, it's on the 29th. That one is on the, no, hold on. Hold on, it's not the 29th. This is in June. It's on the uh, June 19th. June, June 19th. 19th. Is that is the one that is is a, the one that is more popular? If you want to call it that way, people really liked it. I liked it, and, and a lot of people experienced things during during those hours together. It was beautiful. 
Awesome. And now, in case someone watching this have like an additional question now you haven't covered here today, um, are you able to give your email? Are you? Do you have time to respond to people? Absolutely. Sure. Sure. You can. <clears throat> you can email me at info at antoniosanjo.com. My down name and my well. last name. Put it down. Or if you go to my website, there is a contact form. Uh, and, and then you you put all your information and I reply to you if you have any questions, any doubts, if you have questions about the classes or the workshops. Yes, yes. absolutely. And Antonio also has the YouTube channel that I'm also going to be linking down below. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's it's very beneficial to watch some sessions mm -hmm. that you have done and you have my session on your channel as Is well there, if anyone's yes. interested <laughs> to look at the whole story, how that unfolded. I think um, it's very eye-opening to see how everything unfolds and how it connects towards the end. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, as I said, the channel was there not, not to promote me, but to uh, bring awareness so people understand that some of the things that they're experiencing might be coming from, uh, I don't know, time in the womb, past lives or, or, or attachments, right? It's lost souls. And I can, I can talk about whatever. I can tell you whatever today in this, in this interview. I can write about my book and say whatever I want. But right there, it's not me saying it. You know, it's my clients experiencing it. So, so go check. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're going to find useful information and how you can apply that to your life. Sure. Thank you very much, Antonio, for coming on here and spending Thank you. some time with me. It was Thank a you. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Same. And we'll talk maybe in the future. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you again in one of the workshops. And until then. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brigitte. It's been a pleasure. Bye for now. Bye.